Hello. Growing student protests in Bangladesh are taking another dangerous turn. In the past few hours, police have fired tear gas to try to break up student demonstrations in the capital, Dhaka. Activists say at least four people have been injured on the eighth straight day of protests. Paul Chatterjian reports. <laughs> Student protesters have blocked streets in Bangladesh for the past week. They're demanding government action to improve road safety. Two young students were knocked down and killed by a bus last week. Traffic accidents kill at least 7,000 Bangladeshis every year. We have been protesting on the roads for a few days with some of our demands. We are demanding justice for those students of the college killed by a bus, and we want safe roads. Over the weekend, the peaceful protests became violent when police tried to break up the crowds. Rubber bullets and tear gas were fired at demonstrators. The government ordered schools and bus services to shut down. Bus drivers say they were attacked. We stopped running our buses as students attacked and damaged our vehicles. We cannot go on the roads. Students hit our drivers, so no vehicles could move. The government's trying to quell the violence by cutting internet services to cripple social media and censoring both Bangladeshi and international media. Pro-government student groups are being accused of attacking protesters. We all are feeling threatened here. We wanted a peaceful protest. We don't want any trouble occurring around here. Yet rubber bullets were shot on our brothers at Murpur neighborhood. They were dispersed. We don't want all this. Demonstrators were further incensed by a government minister who questioned why there was uproar about two deaths in Bangladesh and a lack of anger about 33 deaths in a bus crash in India the previous day. Government leaders say they're going to implement the students' demands for improved road safety. But more protests are feared as both the ruling and opposition parties campaign for elections due in December. Paul Chaudhurji on Al Jazeera. Well, let's uh, look at why road safety is such a sensitive issue in Bangladesh. More than 25,000 people have been killed on its roads in the past three and a half years. That's 20 people a day dying, and more than 62,000 have been injured on the roads. Well, joining us now via Skype from Dhaka is Shahidul Alam. He is a photographer and social activist. So as we've been saying, these uh, protests were, were sparked uh, by uh, two teens who, who were killed in a, a, a road accident. But is this all about r road safety, or is there uh, something larger going on here? Very much larger. It, this has been going on for a very, very long time. It's an unelected government, so they did not really have a mandate to rule, but they've been clinging on by brute force. Uh, the looting of the banks, the gagging of the media. You mentioned just now that mobile internet is currently, currently switched off. Uh, the extrajudicial killings, the disappearances, the need to give protection money at all levels, bribery at all levels, corruption in education. It's a never-ending list. It's, it's been huge. Uh, so it really is that pent-up en energy, emotion, anger that has been let loose. This particular incident Sad as it is, it was really the valve that allowed things to go through. Uh, very recently, there was another very big protest about the quota because the quota system is rigged in such a way that only people close to the party in power uh, get to get government jobs, and there is a disproportionate amount of jobs going to them. So ordinary people protested. That was very brutally uh, brought down. Under pressure, the Prime Minister offered reforms, but then reneged on that. So this time, that's also part of the reason. So this time, when the students did go on protest, um, again, it went to a situation where they could not control it. And the Prime Minister has promised that she will see to their demands. But of course, people no longer believe. She has no credibility. Uh, she's made promises before. It's not been accepted. So now they don't do it. But I think what we need to look at is what's happening in the street today. The police specifically asked for help from these armed goons to combat unarmed students demanding safe roads. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Today, I was in the streets. There are people with machetes in, in their hands chasing unarmed students, and the police are standing by watching it happen. In some cases, they're actually helping it out. I mean, I've been under 
this morning there was uh, tear gassing and um, I saw the police going ganging up trying to catch these unarmed students whereas these armed goons who are going out wielding sticks and machetes uh, are walking past um, and they're just standing by. So where do you think th things are going to go from here? Because these, these protests um, appear to have spread across the country um, quite spontaneously and, and without any kind of central uh, leadership here. Th this is part of the challenge that the, that the government is, is dealing with in that this is, this is uh, so, so grassroots in, 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 in the way that it has spread. Well, I think the government has miscalculated. It, it certainly felt that fear was enough, repression would have been enough, but I think you cannot tame an entire nation uh, in this manner. Uh, and they, of course, are approaching elections. So the nearer it gets to elections, the more sensitive they are. They know if there is a fair and free election, they will lose. But they haven't got an exit plan because they've misdrewn for so long that if they do lose, they will be torn apart. So they have to hang on by any means, and that's exactly what they're doing. They, they are clinging on using the entire might of the system, plus the armed goons at their disposal. Good to speak with you. Shahidul Alam joining us there from Dhaka. Well, our correspondent Tanvir Chowdhury joins us now uh, from uh, Dhaka. So Tanvir, update us with uh, what's happening there at the moment. Well, a very volatile and tense situation in the city right now. We have reports of uh, clashes in Farmgate, in uh, Jigapi. A huge procession of students were coming from Danmundi towards a place called Elephant Road. Now, they were stopped by the police and uh, were confronted by the supporters of ruling party. This was last about like 15 minutes ago. Now, there was a clash in the area of Danmundi between police and uh, the pro-government supporters. At least five journalists were injured, they were beaten up. Among them were AP photojournalists and others were from the local media. Now even on yesterday, during the clash, at least six journalists were beaten up, including a female journalist from the leading English daily, the Daily Star. She was even molested, according to the newspaper report. Uh, this is making the journalists very scared, you know, because they're there to do their job and they're getting beaten up in front of the police by uh, what they say is the ruling party supporter, we have no way to confirm that. Now, I spoke to some ruling party supporters who brought out a procession in the Dhaka University campus. One of their leaders told me that, look, we were not the one who attacked us yesterday. It was the st students who attacked our office and we just confronted them. And he said, many of the things you are seeing in the social media are Photoshop items. They are really more than that. So they had their own version. Of course, there are some items there are. Uh, possibly big question in the social media. But the city right now, what was a social movement against traffic safety, is more and more turning out to be a political, taking a political dimension rather, you know. And the uh, uh, situation in the, some part of the city as of now is still tense. You can see behind me a very busy road. There's hardly that much traffic. People are not getting out. And uh, there, there is a sort of a critical view in the street. I talked to some people, they said yeah, these are kids, they shouldn't have beaten up by uh, police or the pro-government supporters because uh, they weren't doing anything that was political. They didn't make any political slogan or anything like that. Even though the government said that it was being politicized by the opposition party and they were manipulating the movement. Tanvir, thank you. Tanvir Chowdhury in Dhaka Force.